Well, we don't know actually what hap how often it happens, but it's a quite a common problem. We think that about 30% or so of patients who have GERD don't respond or who'd, who'd, who have uh, what's called non-erosive reflux disease don't respond. But in the general community, we don't know actually how many patients' uh, uh, symptoms don't respond because that's only symptoms, not disease. So it's a little harder to describe. So what I'm looking for is the first is the description that the patient has of the symptoms. So are they describing symptoms that are expected in a patient with gastroesophageal reflux disease? So are they describing heartburn? Are they describing a burning sensation that's coming up from the, uh, the lower part of the chest or the, the higher part of the abdomen and it's going upwards towards the throat? Are they describing that? Are they describing regurgitation, feeling of something, feeling of something that's not burning coming up? Uh, there's other symptoms, but they tend to be less specific for reflux, such as chest pain or some throat symptoms like throat clearing, etc. Cough, a lot of patients get sent to me for chronic cough and they were told it, it was reflux. So that's the first thing I ask them is, what is it that your symptoms are? The second thing I do is I tell them, I ask them, how did it work, for, how did the medications work for you? So if, they, if you were treated with one of the generic medications, like uh, one of the generic proton pump inhibitors like omeprazole, did it help the symptoms at all? Did it help their frequency, the severity, the intensity of it? Uh, did it, and how long did it work for? Or how often does it work? And oftentimes what, you'll, what happens is they say, yeah, it worked for a little bit or it works somewhat, but then there's still some symptoms that are, that are left over. And those are the ones that I really pinpoint. That's the, one, that's the group of patients, that's the symptom group that I, uh, that I study and I study them uh, with a special type of reflux test. The medication hasn't been working for them, uh, they, and they say that there's been some effect or there's been, they, they still feel like they need to take the medication. Then what I'll do is I'll do a, a test called a pH impedance study. pH impedance study looks at the amount of reflux that's coming up on a daily, on a 24 hour period. It's only a 24 hour test. And it looks at the characteristics of that reflux, reflux that's coming up. And what I do is I try to get an estimate of how often it's happening, how much it's happening, what the characteristics are of it. So is it acid or is it weak acid or non-acid? Is it air that's coming up? Is it liquid that's coming up? When does it come up? And then what's the correlation of the reflux to the symptoms? And the interesting part is most of the time, over 50% and upwards of, sometimes upwards of 60% of patients, even on the medicines, uh, even on, with having symptoms that are like GERD, when they're on the medicines, they really don't have any, re, uh, any reflux to speak of that's causing the symptoms. So then I have to start to think something else is going on. And it may not be a disease that we have well described. And that's when we have to start having a discussion about, well, how do we help you get better? How do we help your quality of life get better? That discussion goes toward, almost exclusively towards quality of life. Is, it, is this something that's bothering you? Is this something that's really bothering you? Is it, you know, what can't you do? Or is this something that you can deal with and you were just told you have reflux disease and I need to get it better? Some patients don't want to do anything more. They say, I'm fine with that. My doctor told me I have reflux, and then, and, but they sent me here because it wasn't getting better. If that patient is okay with it and they have no complications, then that's all I'm dealing with is their quality of life. If I help them, if, I can, if they can help me understand how it's impacting them, then I have a discussion about what to do. So is it impacting their sleep? Well, if it's impacting their sleep, we change mechanisms, we change treatments so that we can help them sleep better. Oftentimes it's dietary or activity or maybe some additional uh, low doses of medications to change their sleep, uh, to change the way that they reflux during sleep or change their sleep. Sometimes I'm actually getting at things that people call antidepressants or anxiety medicines. I don't like the term because it really puts sometimes a stigma on it. What we're actually doing is changing the way the nervous system works and is responding to whatever their internal signals are. And I'm not treating depression or anxiety. I'm treating a signal that we otherwise don't quite understand.